Hello everyone, welcome to my video on the principle of mathematical induction. So in the previous video, we stated some uh, summation theorems that I did not prove. And in order to prove them, I'm going to introduce the principle of mathematical induction, which is not the only way to prove these statements, but I think it's one of the easier ways of doing it. So let's go ahead and do that. So the principle of mathematical induction states that if Sn is a statement involving a positive integer n, we first suppose that the case one is true. So we have to go ahead and show that. So if the first case is true, and then the inductive step, step two, is we assume the kth step is true. So we don't prove that, we just assume that to be true. Then our job is to show that the k plus one step is true. If we could do that, then this means that it's true for all cases. So essentially it's kind of like a ladder. You have your rungs. If you have the first step, this is your case one, it doesn't matter where you go. But at some point, if we assume this to be true, and we could prove that the next one exists, then everything in between exists. This is essentially the statement of mathematical induction. Okay, so let's go ahead and prove some of the statements using mathematical induction. So before we get to a proof that requires the mathematical induction in order to prove it, let's start off with the easier ones. So the first claim that we have is the sum from m to n of c times ai. It's equal to c times the sum from m to n of ai. So essentially, we're just taking the constant and we're removing it from the sum. Let's see why we could do this. So in order to prove this, uh, where c is a real number, in order to do this, let's just simply expand it out. So the sum i equals m to n of c times ai, what it's saying is just c times the first term we're starting at m so we have a subscript m plus the next term you're adding one to the m so c times a subscript m plus one plus c times a m two all the way till c times a subscript n okay so we have all these terms notice that each term in here has a c involved so what we could do is just factor out a c by factoring out a c we're left with c open brackets a m plus a m plus one plus a m plus two all the way to a n okay and now we could just rewrite this as a summation so this is equal to c times we could write this as the sum starting at m all the way to n of a i and that's the theorem that we wanted to prove okay so we started off with this ended up with this we are done okay let's look at the next claim so the next claim that we have is the sum from m to n of ai plus or minus bi is equal to the sum from m to n of ai plus or minus the sum of bi from m to n. So I'm just going to do one case. I'll let you work on the other one. So I'll just do the subtraction case. I think it's a, they're both very easy. So for the subtraction. Okay. So we want to show that the sum i from m to n of a i minus a sorry minus b i is equal to the sum of a i from m to n minus the sum of b i from m to n let's go ahead and prove that how do we do that let's begin by expanding so we expand this out so we have a m minus b m plus a m plus one minus b m plus one plus a m plus two minus b m plus two, so on and so forth, all the way to the last term. I'm just gonna write it over here because we're running out of room. A n minus b n. Okay. So all you have to notice is that all the terms that have an a are positive, and all the terms that have a b are negative. So we just split them up. Let's group the a's with the a's and the b's with the b's, giving us a m plus a m plus one plus a m plus two plus dot 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 a n and then plus let's add up all the terms that have the b's in it so minus b m minus b m plus one minus b m plus two minus dot 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 minus b n okay and what we could do now is take out the minus and factor it out so instead of a plus here we get a minus and all these are positive now. So factoring out a plus, all this turns positive. So notice that we have the sum of the am in the first bracket here, starting from m to n of ai, 
and then we're separated by a minus and we have the sum from m to n of your bi because we started at m finished at n okay and this is what we wanted to prove so we did it for the subtraction case it's the same thing for the addition case okay if i just switch all the minus here with a plus we get the same result okay so here we're going to prove claim three and four at the same time so the claim is the sum from one to n of one is equal to n and the sum from one to n of c is equal to c times n where c is a real number and n is a positive integer okay we'll just keep that in mind so these are essentially the same claim you could just prove this one here and then you have this one so let's just do both of them so the proof for three because essentially if you get four you have three so you really if you just wanted to prove this that's sufficient but let's go ahead and prove three it's the same idea we're going to expand this out so we have the sum i equals one to n of one that's just saying there's no i in here so nothing's changing so you're just adding one n times so you have one plus one plus one plus plus one all this n times so if you have n ones this is just simply equal to n and the proof is complete okay so very simple we proved the first claim use the same argument to try to prove this one on your own okay so pause the video give that a try so what you should get is essentially the exact same argument okay so we know this is equal to c times n that's what we want to show so if we expand this out again same argument there's no i's in here so nothing's changing so you're just repeating c n times so it's c plus c plus c plus c and this is happening n times since you have n times c we are done okay so this is the proof okay so let's move on to some more interesting proofs so over here the claim that we're making is that the sum from 1 to n of i is equal to n times n plus 1 all that divided by 2 so there's two ways of solving this so actually there's more but we're going to prove this using mathematical induction and then we're going to prove it in another interesting way what i find it interesting it was actually proved by a mathematician carl gauss when he was 10 years old so he proved this at the age of 10 so what were you doing when you were 10 years old so this guy proved this claim at 10 let's go ahead and show both ways so i'm going to start off with the mathematical induction way just to show you how that's done so we're going to begin with case one so by mathematical induction we're going to consider the case where n equals one okay so the statement this is our statement we're just substituting n with one when we do that what we have here on the left hand side we have the sum i equals one to n but n is being replaced with one so one to one of i and we want to show if this is equal to what we have on the left hand side so we're replacing all the n's with one we have one times one plus one divided by two are these guys equal well let's look at the left hand side the left hand side of this equation we're taking the sum from one to one so we're starting at one but we're finishing at one so we're replacing i with essentially just one just one term so that's equal to one and is that equal to the right hand side well the right hand side we have one times two divided by two and we get one equals two divided by two is one so consider case one we just showed it to be true okay so case one is satisfied okay so we showed it to be true let's now look, move to the inductive step so the inductive step we assume this claim to be true so suppose case n equals k is true so what we're assuming is that the case n equals k we're assuming this to be true so we have this we have i equals 1 to k i'm just going to substitute my i's with k's is equal to k times k plus 1 over 2. so we know this we're assuming this to be true now what we want to show is the case if this is true can we show that the case n equals k plus 1 is true so consider So suppose case n equals k is true we have this consider the case 
n equal to k plus 1. If we could show this to be true, then we're done. What are we saying? Really what we want to show is we want to show that the sum i equals 1 to k plus 1 of i, this whole thing is equal to, by the end of it, we should have, uh, essentially we're replacing the n's here with k plus 1. So we should get k plus 1 times k plus 1, right, I'm replacing the n's with k plus 1, so k plus 1, and then in bracket k plus 1 plus 1, which is k plus 2, all this divided by 2. If we could show this thing here is equal to this, we're done. We completed the proof by induction. So let's go ahead and do that. So consider this case, this to this. And what we're going to do is we're going to separate this. We're going to stop right before the last term. So we're going to consider this as um, the sum of i equals 1 to k. So we're stopping one short from the last one of i. Plus, what would the last term give us? Well, the last term is k plus 1. So what's, th what's sticking out is just the k plus 1 term. Right? If you were to expand this, just, let me just do it on the side to make this more of a convincing argument, is if we uh, substitute the values, the first term is 1, the second term is 2, the, second, the third term is 3, all the way up until 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all the way to k plus k plus 1. Right? This is the last term. So what I'm essentially doing is I'm taking the first k terms and repackaging it up to give me this first uh, summation over here. And I'm leaving out the last term, which was my k, my k plus 1. Okay, so that's what we did. I just repackaged it this way. Why did I do that? Well, the reason being is that the sum from 1 to k of i, we assumed it to be true. We actually know it. By our, uh, the inductive step, we know it's equal to this thing here. So we could replace this with k times k plus 1, all that divided by 2, plus k plus 1. Okay. Here, what we could do is, from this first term and the second term, we could factor out a k plus 1. Not the only way of doing this, but I always like to factor. So if we factor out a k plus 1, what are we left with? Well, here, if we take out the k plus 1, we're left with k over 2. And here, if we take out a k plus 1, we're left with just 1. You could check this by just distributing this back in to see if you get back what you started. And here, we could find a common denominator. Since it's k over 2 plus 1, we could think of it as 1 over 1. And the common denominator here is 2, so multiply the top and the bottom by 2, giving us 2 over 2. This is equal to k plus 1. On the top, we could add the k and the 2, so we get k plus 2. And we could divide the whole thing by the denominator 2. And this is exactly what we wanted to show. We got k plus 1 times k plus 1 plus 1, which is k plus 2, over 2. And therefore, by mathematical induction, this statement here is true for all n. We'll call it Sn. Sn is true. We'll call this thing here Sn is true for all n. Okay, and we're done. This is the proof. Okay. So this is a proof by mathematical induction. Um, now let's look at the exact same proof using uh, the way Gauss did it when he was 10 years old. Okay, so we're going to prove that the sum from 1 to n of i is equal to n times n plus 1 over 2, again, using the, the method Gauss used. Um, supposedly it goes that he got in trouble when he was a kid. His teacher told him to write down uh, the numbers from 1 to 100. He went from 1 to 50, didn't have space on the page, and then he continued writing it backwards. So he went from 1 to 50, then underneath 50, he wrote 51, and then he went from right to left. And what he noticed is that 50, 51, when you sum those values, you got 101. And each column, when he summed them up, it added up to 101, which was essentially um, the same number that he started with, plus 1. And he used this pattern to come up with this proof. So let's go ahead and see exactly what he did. Now the way we, we prove it, it's slightly different, but it's the same concept. So what we do is we rewrite this, the summation, as i equals 1 to n of i, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus dot 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 all the way to the last term, which is n. We're just expanding it out. 
and we're going to call this summation S, capital S. Okay. So let's write out S. We have S is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus dot dot dot. I'm going to write the last maybe two terms. Let's just do n minus 1 and plus n. Okay. And now we're going to write S again, but in the reverse order. Right? So we're going to write here 1 plus 2 plus, this would have been 3, but I'm going to cancel it out. And then we have the last four terms. So we have n minus 3, n minus 2, n minus 1, and n. And we're adding all these guys up. Okay. So now what we do is we sum both of these guys. We add both equations. Okay, so we're just going to add these guys. And we're going to add them vertically. So the first um, let's say the first terms is 1 plus n. So actually on the left-hand side of the equation, we have s plus s. That gives us 2s. The first term, we get n plus 1. The second term, we have n minus 1 plus 2, which is again n plus 1. Okay, I'm not writing it horizontally, but uh, sorry, vertically, but you could just consider it this way. 3 plus n minus 2 is again n plus 1. You guys see the pattern? 4 plus n minus 3 is again n plus 1 plus dot dot dot. If we come towards the end here, it's again obvious n plus 1 and again n plus 1. Okay. And how many n plus 1s do we have? We have n of them. This happened n times. So what we get here is that 2s is equal to n times n plus 1. And then simply by dividing by 2, we get our final statement that the sum s, which is what we call this, is equal to n times n plus 1 divided by 2. And this completes the proof. Okay. So let's look at a couple of other uh, theorems. So the sixth theorem that we dealt with was the fact that the sum from 1 to n of i squared is equal to n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 6. So pause the video, I urge you to use mathematical induction to prove this claim. Okay, so give it a shot and see if you're able to do it. So let's start off with the first case. So case one, so suppose n equals one. Let's see if this is true. If we substitute n with one, I mean, we could call this thing Sn, um, but we'll just assume n is one. Replacing the ends with 1, what we get is i equals 1 to 1 of i squared. And we want to see if that's equal to the right-hand side. So replacing the ends with 1, we get 1 plus 1 times 1 plus 1 times 2 times 1 plus 1. All that over 6. Is this equal? Well, here we're starting from 1 to 1, finishing at 1. So we're substituting the i with 1. But we're only doing it once because it stops after the first um, term. And we get 1 on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we get 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3 over 6. So on the left-hand side, we have 1 squared, which is 1. On the right-hand side, we have 2 times 3, which is 6, divided by 6, which is 1. So the left-hand side and the right-hand side correspond. So case 1 is satisfied. So suppose n equals 1, then therefore case 1 is true so we got the first case that's good now we use the inductive step so we assume the nth uh, sorry the kth case to be true suppose n equals one so we got case uh suppose oh not suppose here we're considering so consider case one suppose n equals k is true. So what we're saying here is the sum from 1 to k of i squared is equal to k times k plus 1 times 2k plus 1, all that over 6. We're assuming this to be true. Let's pretend this is true for now. We don't know. And if this is true, we want to show that the k plus 1 case is true. Suppose n equals k is true. This is the inductive step.
And now we consider the case n equals k plus 1. Okay, so if we have n equals k plus 1, we have the sum i equals 1 to k plus 1 of i squared. Okay. And what we want to get is exactly what we started with here at the end, but adding 1 to each n. So instead of n, we're going to rewrite it as k plus 1. Here it's n plus 1, but n is being replaced with k plus 1, so we're expecting to get k plus 2. Right? Think of it as k plus 1 plus 1, which gives us k plus 2. Here we have 2 times n, so 2 times k plus 1 plus 1. So this is 2k plus 2 plus 1, so we expect to get 2k plus 3. All that divided by 6. If we could get this over here, if we could show that this thing here is equal to this, then we're done. Our proof is complete. So let's go ahead and try to do that. So we use the same technique that we saw earlier, where we stop just one short. So we expand it out. So we have um, basically one plus, sorry, one squared plus two squared plus three squared plus dot 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 plus k squared plus k plus one, all that squared. We break it up at the kth step. So we repackage the first k terms giving us the sum i equals 1 to k of, oops, of i squared. But since we stopped here, we have to include this piece. So we have plus k plus 1, all that squared. Okay, so we stopped here. And then we added them in. The reason we do this is because this, we assumed it to be true. We know that the, the sum from 1 to k of i squared up here is this thing here. So let's replace that in. Substituting that in, we get, because we assumed it to be true, k times k plus 1 times 2k plus 1 over 6 plus k plus 1 squared. Okay, and now what we could do is factor out a k plus 1 from the first term and the second term. Factoring it out, I always go for factoring. If you wanted to distribute, you could do that as well. Um, I think factoring is easy. So if we factor out a k plus 1, what we're left with here is k times 2k plus 1 over 6, right? That's this term here without the k plus 1. And here, if we factor out a k plus 1, we're left with just one more k plus 1 because it's squared. Okay. So we're hoping to get from this equal to this. I'm going to have to erase this just to give myself room. But if we simplify here, we can multiply the top and the bottom by 6, giving us k plus 1 on the outside. And then in square brackets, we're left with, uh, let me distribute this in. I get 2k squared plus k by distributing the k. And then here we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by 6 to get a common denominator. And then I'm going to multiply in the 6k. So the 6 times k is 6k and 6 times 1 is 6. All this divided by 6. Okay, So I'm just going to have to erase this and give myself some room. So what we're left with here is k plus 1 divided by 6. The fact that we have the k plus 1, that's good. We have the 6, that's good. Let's pull that out. k plus 1 over 6. And what are we left with in the bracket? We're left with 2k squared plus k plus 6k is 7k and plus 6. Okay, so remember, this is our goal. We're trying to get to this guy. We have to factor this. Let's go ahead and do that. Just gonna erase to give myself room, and uh, this I'll leave here. Let me erase all this. So let me just focus on this piece over here. To factor out the two k squared plus seven k plus six, this is essentially just a uh, product sum. So you're looking for two numbers that multiply to give you a times c, two times six, which is twelve. And those same two numbers, when you add them, you get seven. Well, the factors of 12 are 2 and 6, but you can't add or subtract 2 and 6 to get 7. 12 and 1 still doesn't work. 3 and 4, 3 and 4 work. So 3 times 4 is 12. 3 plus 4 is 7. So what we're going to do, because our first term is not a 1, you're going to have to separate the middle term with these two values, 3 and 4. So just focusing on what's in the square bracket, we could rewrite this as 2k squared plus 4k plus 
3k plus 6. Notice I didn't change anything. Whatever's in the square bracket, all I'm doing is taking the 7k and separating them into the roots. The 4 that we got and the 3 that we got when we use product sum. And now we we consider the, the first two brackets, uh, the first two terms and the second two terms. The first two terms, we can factor out a 2k, leaving us with a k plus 2 in the bracket. And the second term, we can factor out a 3, leaving us with, again, a k plus 2 in the bracket. It's vital that whatever is left in the bracket is the exact same thing because now what we do is we factor out the k plus 2 from both terms. Factoring out the k plus 2 leaves us with 2k plus 3. And this is exactly what we wanted. That's what we have down here. Our k plus 2 and our 2k plus 3. So this here could be rewritten as k plus 2 times 2k plus 3. And that's what we have here. That was our goal. So again, by mathematical induction, we, we show that this is true for all n. So by induction, I'll call it Sn. This statement here, Sn, is true for all n. Okay, and we're done. This is the proof. So the last claim that we have over here is the fact that the sum from 1 to n of i cubed is equal to n times n plus 1 divided by 2, all that squared. So this one here, I'm not going to solve. I'm going to challenge you to actually prove this using mathematical induction. So give it a shot. Let me know if you're able to get it. Uh, if a 10-year-old could do it, so can you. Uh, go through the same process that we did for case uh, six, sorry, 5 and 6 for i and i squared. It's the exact same process, just a big computational, and you could get you have to show that this statement is true okay so i'll challenge you with that one there let's look at our last example so in the last example over here we have to prove the formula for a finite geometric series where a is a constant and r is a common ratio we have that the sum from 1 to n of a times r to the i minus 1 if we expand it out that's equal to a plus a times r plus a times r squared plus dot 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 all the way to a times r to the n minus 1 and we want to show that that's equal to a times r to the n minus 1 divided by r minus 1 where r cannot be equal to 1 right because if r is equal to 1 you're dividing by 0 that's an issue so this works for r the case where r is not equal to 1 so pause the video try to do this on your own my hint is that it's similar to the proof that Carl Gauss did when he was 10 years old okay so that's my hint go ahead and give it a shot so let's prove this So this one's a bit more difficult than the one that Carl Gauss did when he was 10 years old. We begin by calling this sum over here, we'll call this S. Okay. So S is equal to A plus A times R plus A times R squared. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and find R times S. Okay. So we have R times S. We're multiplying this sum here by R. So if we multiply by r, the first term here becomes a times r. The next term becomes plus a times r squared. The next one becomes a times r cubed plus dot 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 plus a times rn minus 1. And the last term is going to be a times r to the n. So what we took, we took this sum here and we just multiplied it by r. Next, what we do is we take this sum and just leave it as is. And we're just going to rewrite it. So if we write the sum, the sum is just simply a plus a r plus a r squared plus dot 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 a r n minus 1. Sorry, in this case it would be n minus 2 plus a r to the n minus 1. Okay, And what we do here is we subtract the two equations. So same idea, but Gauss added them us we're going to subtract subtracting this we get r times s minus s okay and this is the thing about proofs why are we adding why are we subtracting we don't really know we're just kind of trying it and seeing what works okay so we attempt here we multiply it by r we don't really know why we're just kind of doing this and um we have r s minus s that's fine there's a way of doing it from working backwards like if you multiply r minus one over here times s you get s times r minus 1 and this is what we're trying to build if we factor out an s here you're left with s times r minus 1 and it kind of makes sense 
if you're uh, reverse engineering the proof. But at the beginning, if you didn't know this, it's kind of hard to come up with this. So that's what's difficult about proofs. Uh, but let's go ahead and continue. We subtracted these two terms. Now we subtract here. We're left with um, AR minus A plus AR squared minus AR. So subtracting these terms, subtracting these, you get this. Subtracting the next one, let's go a bit further. AR cubed minus AR squared. Let's do the last two plus, let's go dot dot dot, plus A rn minus one minus a r n minus two and the last one a r n minus a r n minus one okay. so what you have to do here is maybe do a couple more iterations to see the pattern that emerges but what you're supposed to catch here is the fact that the first term and the last term of the first two brackets same number opposite sign a r negative a r that's gone then you have your AR squared and the negative AR squared. So again, the outermost terms of the brackets cancel, except the one over here. So AR cubed would cancel with the next one that I didn't write, AR cubed. And we saw this pattern emerge. So here the second term remains, which means the second to the last term is gonna remain. So the ARN minus one here cancel, one's positive, one's negative. This one, the ARN minus two, is gonna cancel with the AR to the N minus two over here, which would be positive, leaving us with just the A to the RN, uh, a times r to the n and this term here the, the minus a so what we get is r s minus s so here we're using a telescoping uh, sum argument and it's leaving us with negative a plus a to the r n okay so here we could factor out the s leaving us with s times r minus one and here we could factor out an a and i'm just going to reverse the order and write it as r to the n minus one and the last step is divide by the r minus one so this gives us the sum s is equal to on the numerator a times r to the n minus one over r minus one and this is the proof this is the formula we wanted to show we got a times r to the n minus one divided by r minus one and this completes it okay so i hope this video helped i hope you understand and uh keep practicing i'll see you in the next video